again, before I start this thing up only to have it die, where would you like to go? If I see a store along the way we can stop at, I can, I'm just, I'll grab some cigars. Absolutely. Maybe, uh, the first mission and then <laughs> hopefully I'll get to see Biggie Big and he will uh, be able to help us out with a ride. You can go to the show and start getting set up. Something fans don't know is all the time wrestlers spend getting to shows and different airports and customs and all these little things like I say that you could call an inconvenience but again being the fan you have the same problem as that you have all this traffic to deal with. Expenses like buying tickets for the kids if you have kids, buying merchandise, trying to keep up with independent wrestling rather than being just a bandwagon fan that follows a little bit of the WWE or TNA. This is hardcore wrestling. This is people that go out there, have a nine to five job full time and then still try to wrestle. And I've always felt bad how hard these guys work. Most of these young kids, it's a dream because they watch the guys on TV like Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Batista, and they want to be them. But there's really no school. There's no place for these guys to understand what it takes to actually go through the trials and tribulations of becoming these great superstars. So I teach a school in Calgary, and it's my mission to educate kids on professional wrestling, a sport which is not just wrestling, it is, I'd say, gymnastics, public speaking, martial arts, dancing, and you have to have a damn good memory. And again, if you have a realistic looking body, it helps, but if you spend a lot of time in the gym, you definitely get a better push. So it's the only sport that you have to travel, like I say, sometimes three or four days a week in strange cities where you don't know anybody. Find a gym, make sure you eat healthy, make sure that everything you do, which is being watched by the public eye if you're on TV, is safe. You're not a risk or unreliable, because if you are considered unreliable or too risky, you won't be on TV because a lot of kids watch this show. And again, kids who I love more than anything on earth are the primary fans of professional wrestling yet there's no kids wrestling schools out there so again I'll go back to my little thing I teach the only kids wrestling school on the planet and I teach wrestling the way it's supposed to be taught it's a lost art and it comes from the heart and my family as you know has been teaching wrestling for years and years and years and Stu Hart passed down the tradition to me and I'm damn proud to make sure that if you want to get into professional wrestling and you're under the age of say 18, there is a place out there that you can come up even for a two month summer school and just see if you like it. So there's some understanding before you jump into this world of wrestling that you don't really know much about because they don't talk about the background of it. They don't talk about what it takes to become a wrestler, just they show you what it is when you're on TV or they show you some horrible story of another wrestler that's died and they don't talk about how much fun these guys have had or how many lives they've changed or how many kids they've made happy. So again, professional wrestling to me is a lost art and it's a sport that is uh, slowly fading and we need to try to relight professional wrestling's flame. So I come do these small shows hoping that people understand Ted Hart is not really about the money. It's nice to get paid to do something you love to do but I'm not getting rich doing independent wrestling. It's more like I'm getting uh, satisfied that the few fans out there that are serious enough in a city like Los Angeles to take their time to map quest the show, to find the building, spend their 20, 30 bucks on tickets and merchandise. You guys make me feel important like I have a purpose out there. And I hope most of you independent wrestlers don't forget this is what you chose to do you're living your dream and all you can try to do is get better and if you don't make it to the top you know what as long as you didn't quit and you tried your hardest you can always look in the mirror and be proud of yourself because one fan to me is the same as a thousand and you did your job it's a code of honor like guys like Sabu Jack Evans Ruckus they risked their lives for entertainment whether there's one fan in the audience or there's ten ten thousand we go out there and we try to do things that make you remember our name the only way we're gonna live forever is by your stories and YouTube a place you guys can go check out Teddy Hart Jack Evans a kid named Pock from England there's a new guy I haven't even met him yet named El Blazer 
He's unbelievable too, and I'll put him over right now because I'm one of those guys that's not afraid to talk about other guys that do crazy shit. I actually want to promote them. But go to YouTube and check out some of these people and spread the message out. All I ask you to do is if the video is good and you watch it, tell someone else and it'll spread like wildfire. You fans are the voice and wrestling is the choice. We made as a group, you the fan, me the wrestler and the crew of guys I represent, we need to keep this business going. And it's up to you, because I guarantee I'll do my part in the ring. And I hope to still be on TV and end up being the king. Owen Hart said it once, and I liked it. Enough is enough, it's time for a change. Professional wrestling needs to change. It needs to become more entertaining and more athletic orientated on high spots that make sense and athletic shit that no one else on earth can do. So it's nice to see all you big guys out there. Like I say, I'm not a midget. I'm not 130 pounds. I hit the gym every day, but there's a certain look that's realistic to the nine to five person out there that's watching wrestling. And it's nice to see big guys out there doing crazy shit. So you have the WWE. All I'm trying to do is come up with an alternative. So hopefully Kevin Kleinrock and Wrestling Society X can make some sort of comeback and uh, combine their skills with AAA wrestling down in Mexico who's drawn 20,000 people. We could be a revolutionary force in wrestling in the future what I would call a hybrid version of what wrestling was when Rey Mysterio Jr., Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Chris Benoit, Owen Hart, Brett, Shawn Michaels in his prime, these kind of guys were doing, and wrestling starting to drop off and the talent's becoming mediocre. I don't need to say any names. You guys know who you are. Watch the old tapes. You guys couldn't lace their boots up. Besides the guys that are in there that are still going, that are getting older, that are still unbelievable to me, that still make me wonder how the hell they get up, like The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, who, like I say, I don't really know you enough to make a comment about the kind of guy you are, but as a wrestler, I'm amazed that you're still walking and you're still entertaining fans, that you've been able to keep your name alive for this many years at a top level. So those kind of matches I remember, and those are the kind of guys I looked up to, and all I'm going to try to do is recreate something that the fans have lost, which is light heavyweight wrestling that is hard hitting, very entertaining, and has some of the craziest spots. If you don't know what spots are, it's when two guys in the ring who might not like each other outside the ring work together to create something called magic, which wrestling is. And you fans who are smart enough to understand what the magic is all about realize that it takes more than one guy to put on a match. And when two guys or four guys work together, even though they might not like each other, and they put on a show, you know at the end of the day you're going to go home and you're going to tell your fans, your friends and your family you had a good time. Support this business because these wrestlers out here besides me need you. I just need kids to join my wrestling school and I can pass on my legacy that way. But there's a lot of other guys out there that don't have the ability to teach kids and they need you fans to support these small independent shows and make them feel important. Because there's nothing, nothing worse out there than living a dream that no one cares about. So thank you, independent wrestling fans of the world, for keeping this business alive. Thank you, Gary App, for bringing me out here. God bless you. Have a nice day, guys. I'll talk to you at the show.